Hey, my name is Julian Wells, and I'm here with Alina and Dawn. Uh, welcome, guys. I um, thanks, Julian. I got thanks. the the idea to just make a real quick recording. I don't know will come, you know, in terms of uh, what people will be attracted to, but uh, it started off with um, with Alina sharing with me that she thinks that you know we could be seeing uh, alien ships of you know of some level uh this september and um and i went into sort of like you know how did i feel on that and you know what was i expecting and you know and is my reality in alignment with what she's telling me and i said yeah actually there's something about this september that's that literal in the ufo world so i said i'd like to talk with you alina because let's let's hash this out what what am i going to see it's another way of saying it <laughs> <laughs> because um i am i'm i'm close to it but i'm you know i don't see it maybe as sensitively as you are i'm sensitive but not sensitive on everything if that makes sense <laughs> so um so what were you what were you can you elaborate a little bit more on the september Sure. I've been um, channeling and also in contact with a being called Anea. She's 10th um, dimensional. She's from the Akashan starship, the L race. And she was telling me that come, come September, there's going to be huge disclosure about extraterrestrials existing, about all of this advanced technology coming out. It's a huge quantum leap evolutionary sh shift for this planet Earth and for the surrounding solar system that we're in. Um, so she said that's coming. That's part of the disclosure, full disclosure movement. So does that, that happen coming. all in September or is that the beginning of what that becomes? Well, it's going to be some kind of a huge disclosure will happen in September, the beginning uh, of it. Some huge data okay. dump or it's somebody not like, will... It's not like 24 hours later, we're all on ships being taught advanced technology and healing our bodies. Not that kind no, of... It's, no, no, <laughs> it's, it's a slower start. Okay. The, Just wondering how far start. it goes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, you, you may be on a ship being taught advanced uh, I Well, no, I don't, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. I, I'm already on starships being taught this and that and back and forth. It's mm -hmm. already in my reality. But certain people, certain light warriors, certain light healers, psychics will start to meet ETs in physical contact. Mm -hmm. That's what Anais is, is saying. And that's a huge possibility for many of us because we're going into mm -hmm. this quantum leap. We're going right into the middle of the photon belt. And mm -hmm. scientists discovered this thing long time ago, 1975. So yeah. where our planet is going right in the middle of this thing, and it's a huge energy field, literally, that it's a quantum leap in evolution for humanity. And ETs are all here watching this happening, and yeah. they're interacting with many of us already. But the L race specifically wants to come down to the planet and start making human ET contact with people. Hey, I'm going to, if you allow me, I'm going to lend my scout ship in your backyard get to meet you, get to talk to you, give you some galactic mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Do you give us permission to do this? That sort of thing. That's what mm -hmm. they've been telling me. It's not going to be everybody, but it's going to be certain people who are awakened and, you know, into this stuff already in it. Or a bit psychic. Or a bit psychic, exactly. Yeah. So that's what she's been telling me. And she says it doesn't matter who's elected, who's whether it's Hillary Clinton, right. whether it's Bernie Saunders, where, whether it's Donald Trump. This quantum leap is in progress, so it's going to make huge changes economically, politically. It doesn't matter who's who's elected in November. Mm -hmm. um, th this thing is going to go on to evolve the planet and the people and the solar system. It's going to make huge changes to get us ready to be a galactic civilization. 2016 September is the kickoff point for this process to be happening, and we're ready traveling in the photon belt we're beginning to to feel this stuff and see it i mean hey bernie bernie saunders is running for president hillary clinton is talking about ufos and getting to the bottom of that in area mm -hmm. 51 donald trump yeah. is saying what he's saying so weird things are happening already uh -huh. yeah so my my question is at the onset when we talk about um 
being able to interact with ETs starting in September, those who are sensitive or have or some, some directional thought in this way, um, are we talking about what I've seen where we get uh, holographic projections from them? Uh, that level of, of direct interaction, because that's fairly common. Uh, or, or are we going to get the, the physical body ones, you know, where we can, you know, bump fist, high five, and that sort of thing? Uh, do you happen to know if it's going to be one of those two levels? It's for, for certain people, it's going to be bump this, hi fi, yeah. hi five in person, mm -hmm. meet each other, greet, like physically greet each other, meet each other. It's going to mm -hmm. be the humanoid type ETs who come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. So they might have different skin color and hair color, but they're going to look humanoid, not to scare the general populace. Um, you can tell right away they're different because their skin color is different, their hair is very different, their height is 10 feet and taller. So you can tell the difference between yeah. the physical aspects of who you're meeting. But they're going to be humanoid. You're not going to see ETs that are like 30, 40 feet tall or look like cats or, you know, somebody animalistic or something. You're going to get meet the humanoid ETs first. Things that then might they, have once been born on this planet. Yes, yes. Um, and some of the L's are... Uh, Palladian hybrids mixed with L and Andromedan and Arcturian, so a lot of them are humanoid looking. So they're going to be coming down first to introduce themselves for us that are psychically developed and attuned to what's going on. Um, the ones that are just awakening are mostly going to get the holographic contact started, initiated, like what the Agartha network is doing, talking to a lot of, uh, of us that are awakening on the surface of the planet, mm -hmm. telepathically and holographically, even taking people down to Agartha and teaching them. So yeah. it's, it's oh, a mixture of both. I, I'm, I'm being reminded, okay, if you are getting a holographic, okay, this is kind of information coming from that point. If you are getting a holographic and you're not sure you can ask it to make it more fake because sometimes it's so real you feel like you can touch it and your mind kind of goes through a spin of reality check if you can't mm -hmm. if you can't touch it you and it's it's there then in, your mind will actually spike it as like a monster it's like oh my god there's something there and i can't touch it so the so what you should do is if it seems too real and you're like before judging it and before touching it when you think it's a, an illusion of some form ask it to prove that it's only illusion basically say illusion or not illusion like literally declare that because some people will have an anxiety attack when they have uh, a being there and they have no idea you know and usually that anxiety attack what it does is it knocks you out you just fall asleep you're like <gasps> and then you faint you know so so to prevent this pre to prevent fainting at the onset right. of people getting even the holographic uh experiences say illusion or not illusion and what can happen is that the reality can turn into something like from the old star wars movies you know like it's just like a blue like blee, 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 like you, like it mm -hmm. looks a lot faker and cheaper they're like oh the resolution on our screens are set too high let's just lower it down a couple octaves in quality and then that's something you'd be like oh okay good there's something there you know it's not touchable it can't hurt me you know that sort of thing okay so you say illusion or not illusion. Uh, and then between the funny thing is they know from how you say it. You say illusion or not illusion. Illusion, you have a vibrational frequency going in your, in your mind as to what is the most illusion-like illusion thing I can imagine. My definition of illusion and non-illusion, which means what I consider absolutely real. So they basically, they, they, they measure your brain wave right at that point for which, uh, you know, what's the highest and what's the lowest, and then, they, and then they adjust for you. So they adjust the frequency of the projection. It's like adjusting the television set type thing. Anyway, a, a, little, bit, right. <laughs> a little bit further okay. than I thought we would go with that, but that's how it works. Yeah, it makes sense to me. And some of these ETs have the ability to shapeshift between humanoid and what they really look like, not to scare people. So it's a somewhat yeah. humanoid appearance that they physically meet you in. But they and could be like a blob. Yeah, they could be like a blob and take on human form so you're comfortable with what you're seeing. You're not scared and you don't have your panic right. attack and faint. 
you know, a lot of yeah. humans are psychics or psionics are making contact right now with ETs. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing process. It's been going on for millennium as ETs visit us constantly. They're all cloaked. We don't see them. But the telepathic communication is always there. Mm -hmm. In and out every day for me. Mm -hmm. It's like telepathically, oh, hi, I'm here and here to give you this info and this info, give you all the clues and pieces for all mm -hmm. your presentations and website information to disclose my basic uh, mission right now is to disclose as much as I can from different benevolent ET sources and from what I myself see out in space in my light body or astral travel or remote viewing. There's so mm. many ways of seeing stuff, what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, it's quite an experience and it's a daily occurrence. Whether I'm asleep, awake, it's like, oh, okay, well, got to go there, got to see this, got to record that, got to yeah. make it public. As simple as that. Yeah. Awesome. She's basically like the lady who has a telescope into outer space and she's uh -huh. on like this little this little, you know, planetarium up in the mountain. That's kind of like her vibrations like, "Oh, oh, what's going on here?" and you're like, "Oh my god, that's amazing. I'm going to share it." Like, "Oh, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'll share." That's kind of how I see Elena. She's like yeah. that kind of predictor, that kind of, you know, she's very on. Like she's she she's right. she should be doing like a daily news show on what's going on because she's that on the, in the moment. Other people are just like you know here at third, you know third mention down the, down the food line of right. like exactly how it happened. She's the one who's like seeing this like firsthand. Like this is not a story. This is where it originated. So yeah. So I listen to when Elise, when Lena talks about stuff. <laughs> I really sure. do. It's like like live in action. Today I saw Ashtar again. Haven't spoken to him in 15 years. I did some work for them. I was a communications officer in 2000, 2000 to 2010 with Ashtar Command, Ashtar and Athena. And um, today he showed up and just said, hey, you know, we're working right now on monitoring your... Um, your barriers, your protective barriers around Earth, around the solar system to make sure the um, bad guys stay out and the ones that can come in and go out can do that. And the barriers are still there and um, sometimes they're lowered so, you know, species can come in and go out and also the SSP ships back and forth, but they monitor who, who does what to to make sure rogues don't come in and they're working around Saturn and Jupiter to make sure the Ganymede portal is protected and the, um, the Super Confederation space station that's uh, orbiting around Jupiter is also protected because that's where the trade negotiations happen. Um, so these guys, um, Ashtar Command is working more with the secret space programs at this time. They were more hands-off in 2000 to 2010. They were working more with Solar Warden on protection, but now they're working more closely with the SSBs and other Confederation ET groups. So that's what Ashtar said. And he mm -hmm. said, hey, don't call me Ash. I don't like that nickname. I never <laughs> did when you called me that in 2000. Don't call me Ash. I'm Ashtar. Call me Ashtar. <laughs> that's awesome. And then, yeah. and then I think I asked you the question, does he know anything about the video game Pokemon? Because the main character's name is Ash, and he's a phenom in Japan, and any any little kid who plays the Pokemons. So oh, yeah. Ash, Ash if they may start teasing him when they when they come across the real Ash char. They're going to be like, no, we're going to call you Ash, just because Ash is cooler or something. And you're like, stop calling me Ash, I could just <laughs> see it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Ash is a sh Ash is a short kid with black spiky hair. Ashtar is a big guy who's around eight feet tall, muscular with blonde right. long hair and uh, piercing blue different. eyes. Yeah. Big difference, and he has his counterpart Athena, female counterpart. Um, so it's quite interesting. These guys yeah. are half Palladian, half they're a mix of everything in Ashtar Command. Humanoid looking, some are not. They have their light cities where you can do intermediary work, you know, help out other species. So it's quite, it's quite interesting. Wow. So, um, are you going to be, um, still around in September to talk to us again? Or, uh, or can we expect some continued communication on how things are going? Should we not be 
fully invested in the experience like you are. Like yeah. you know, have they, you, have you you th those those without a telescope know how and how if things are going. Well, I don't know yet. I'm in talks with Anaya and the Akishan. It depends. I might get a human representative who represents me, and I go off. We're in talks. Mm. They said it, it's a destiny. Thirteen thousand years have passed. You're locked in a mm. timeline to go back home into the future. Mm -hmm. We're coming to get you. You're going home. So that's what they said. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wait a sec, but I want my family, my parents and my cat to come with me. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, if they come, they're going to be much bigger. Genetic recoding will happen. You'll be genetically recoded to your original Andromedan Palladian blueprint, which is 12 foot tall lady who is blue skin and um, blonde blue hair, basically with piercing mm -hmm. blue eyes. That's what I really look like as my ET star traveler self. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I would be you know reverting back to on the Akashen because I wouldn't keep my 3D body I evolved back into my original genetic ET blueprint over the, of the Star process Traveler. of a couple of days or something like that yeah not like yes. over years but like maybe very no. very short span of time yeah and then because... so but your parents would require the recoding to join you because they wouldn't be able to survive your environment without being like you so yes. uh, they would basically, yeah. you'd be actually asking them to become like bit by a werewolf or a vampire, so to speak. <laughs> just yes, to be, yes, just to exactly. tease the idea, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they have a choice, I'm sure, at the last moment, right? You're like, yeah, yeah we're, we're taking off. You want to be yeah, bit well, or you want to stay here? <laughs> well, I've told them already. I haven't told them about the oh, bitten no? part, but okay. dad is an electric. Dad is an electrical engineer. You give him technology, he'll play with it. He'll make a lot of some things. Uh, mm -hmm. Mom likes jewelry. Cat is just wants to be outside, and she could do that on the Akashan because there's a lot of beautiful gardens and open spaces for animals mm -hmm. to just wander about, you know, yeah. and not get fleas, not get run over by a car. There's no <laughs> such thing on the Akashan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the cat would love it. The parents, not so much. I don't know. We'll see. Uh -huh. it's it's we'll see like right now it's and i still want to report on what's going on i still want to do disclosure so i have mixed feelings i want to go back i i do i love the well, higher dimensions do you, do you have there. an idea of where your parents originally came from also the, the like what they'd be leaving that opportunity in order oh to, to... like what would your parents do if they stayed here in terms of finding their Stay here you know, or star, yes, exactly. star race sort of thing um, they're open to the possibility of aliens, UFOs, ETs, but they're kind of like, they want to see it to believe it. They're that oh, yeah. type of people. But, but will they go into it. shock when they see it or will they, they'd be able to be good in 24 hours or something? They'd be good in 24 hours because they're already shocked by what I say and what I do. Oh, My so dad calls you, me you've alien. done the warning shot already. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Oh, I told you, this is exactly what I said. You heard it. <laughs> yeah, uh, my 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 parents fully believe that I'm extraterrestrial because mm -hmm. my diet has changed, my vision has changed, mm -hmm. everything has changed. I'm not the same person I was five seven years ago. I have a different mm -hmm. diet. Mm -hmm. I'm very um, organic food minded. I can't mm -hmm. stand or tolerate GMOs in my body. Mm -hmm. um, my are my eyes are going dark. When I'm in bright lights, I can't even look at the lights anymore. I have to wear dark sunglasses. So I'm I'm genetically already being prepared for mm -hmm. this quantum leap and energy shift, this event that's coming. Yeah. So my my ET DNA is already kicking in. Oh, I yeah. still look human, but I'm not exactly. I'm becoming the right. hybrid that I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So but, you know, now, remember, Julian, when we talked the other night, they were telling us that all of these changes were coming and that, that pretty much they, I think they said that it, they had to be completed by the end of September. Um, wasn't that the, the time frame that they gave as far as the initial part of disclosure and what's we're going through with June and July and that sort of Correct. thing? Correct. Correct. Yes. We're, we're actually going through some very heated changes, uh, first in our personal lives and each of the progresses we make in our personal lives will show up like in the political world. So you sort of like, deal with your inner demons when you have you know a demon show up and mm -hmm. it will then reflect into the outer reality and it'll become like a political change too so as you go through your pains it may have nothing to do with po political ideas in your life you see like you may just be right. having a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend 
But that goes out. It goes out. It's like you send a message and then the government goes that way and, and community changes that way. And so if you haven't well, already I, noticed, every sort of like major like insight of like bump of, of awareness that, that each one of us takes, the other world goes through like a bump in the next, you know, weeks or months. Every right, single and time. We're, and and we're, we're talking about this on the day that Orlando took place. And, yeah. and how people are going to be reacting to that uh, scenario and, and that, that event is going to change how we as a community move yeah. now also and and the politics behind it i mean yeah, it's, it's, I... yeah the, the 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 lesbian by gay thing is massive it is a massive massive vibration that is not respected by so much in the country like it is such a pure amazing truth within it mm -hmm. within it because no one is truly all masculine and no one is truly all feminine and these people basically say, look, this is what it is when you're more masculine and more you're more feminine. These are how it, this is how it matters. And we already live it. Basically, that community knows how to live in a different society. They yes. know how to build their communities and they know how to stick together and they know how to treat each other as advanced human beings. Like you already drop a, a great deal of judgment when it comes to sexuality is an open mm -hmm. is an open book. Right. So yeah. they already know how and they've they've been sh trying to show us. So what's happening right now, this event, uh, severe violence against them, even if you are, you know, anti-gay, you know, or lesbian or bi, you now have some reason to be in their court because mm -hmm. as people, you begin to take a closer look at them as people, you start to get a little bit more empathy for them for once it's like they have to right. throw themselves on their sword to get your good graces almost and um, vibrationally I'm... attracted it's, it's a terrible thing to be such isolated but it sends a very specific message it really does and it's and you know i don't know how it can come to be besides just the vibration of saying gay lesbian bias want to send a message that look mm -hmm. Look at us. We're, we're, we die and live and breathe just like you. So, of course, this is a massive and, shockwave that happened. And P and P. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're all wave. humans, and we all have the same human rights. doesn't matter if mm -hmm. you're bisexual, if you're gay, if you're a lesbian, if you're a transsexual, right. or... And the next step is uh, if you're asexual. a hybrid. Yeah. Yes. Um, Okay. Well, I happen to be bisexual, and to me, I have the same human rights as everybody else, and I believe that transsexuals can go into any washroom that they choose to go in by what they look like, by mm -hmm. the gender that they choose. I mean, even Obama passed a law two weeks ago saying trans transsexuals can go into the bathroom of their choice according to the gender that they associate with. Doesn't matter if you look like a female and have male genitals, you can go into the female washroom because you associate as a female, even though you haven't completely had the gender reassignment. Right. You might have had the top surgery. You're, you're not about female. the. The intention least, is there that you're not going to back yeah. off. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. Right? The intention is you're going to complete the process, not that you're going to back off. There's more yeah. people succeed with the procedure than fail with the procedure. So that's the assumptions. Or, Yes. Or if you even keep it like you've done your top female mm -hmm. and your bottom is male, even if you keep that, you still mm -hmm. have the right to go to the female bathroom because you associate as female, even though you mm -hmm. have male genitals. Mm -hmm. There right. are transsexuals who do that. And just like there are um, transsexuals who are men on the top, but still have female genitals. Mm -hmm. And they might want to go into the female bathroom. And they mm -hmm. have every right to do that, according to Obama's new law that he passed. Of course, the schools are up in arms. Oh, my God. How could this happen? We're going to well, sue the Obama administration for well, this. Well, the schools in particular, because their imagines get blown by the idea that children of any age and type can say, I can go into the girls' bathroom choosing. now, or I can right. go into the boys' bathroom. Because you know what? Right now, I feel like I associate with being female or male. Of course, the schools are going to flip out. Their imaginations are up there, and they're ready to see that start happening because the children have the imaginations. The children mm -hmm. inspire yes. them to have the imagination. So, of course, they're freaking out at the high probability of that occurring. 
That's all. So yeah, I love I love that so <laughs> much. I, I, I love it too. And kudos for Obama for passing the law. Stir up. Let's get people talking about this and mm -hmm. let's oh, yeah. let's everybody go to the well, to the bathroom I, they want to go to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and I think that I think the early thing about today though that showed up is is that for you know three decades or so, uh, gay men who who have sex with other men have not been allowed to donate blood. And then all of a really? sudden, yes, wow. the, 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 the FDA recently changed the rules on that, not fully accepting it. But, um, but I, for example, I was just reading that the Orlando blood bank had not changed and, and was, was doing the old rules. And now I'm seeing pictures of people lined up to donate blood because of this yeah. emergency situation. And yeah. they, that they have ch changed the rules at Orlando Blood Bank in that there's, there's also been a report, Bernie Sanders actually reported that everybody will be allowed to give blood and it'll be accepted from everyone. Mm. So you're, you're already seeing a shift from the old paradigm into, into something new just mm. through this event in, 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 in something that seems so obvious, seems so obvious to most people. And I think most people just weren't aware that it was still on the books and it really is showing itself now. Yeah. I, I even want to say um, the event that happened in, in Orlando, Florida last night, I think it's like, yeah, it was last night, right? Yeah. yeah 2 a.m. today. Yeah. Um, that is whatever you've got to make it to see the bigger picture. It mm -hmm. can be a conspiracy. Okay. It can be a psyop. It can be, you know, uh, lesbian, gay, right, you know, activist, totally against them. You could see it as, uh, you know, ISIS, if you want, or whatever. Or you could see it in perhaps another way where the energy was ripe for lesbian, gay, bi to be put on the map of saying we're just as human as and, and deserving of everything that you do. Almost like there's nigh room for discrimination across the entire country at that point. The energy may have, right. may have manifested in such a terrible way, which sometimes happens from a vibration of desperatism. Mm -hmm. Are there, you know, are there people in those communities that are desperate? Oh, yes. And so the vibration yes. of harm against themselves is kind of like how there's stabbing themselves to get the message out to you look i still bleed i still i i am in every way equal so then so then the question that i have is is um considering that we're still doing this to humans to ourselves mm -hmm. what 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 is going to change in this short span of time that's going to convince extraterrestrials that it's safe to start the contact yeah, we're, if we're okay. talking about this in September, yes. I mean, you're going to point to June and say, and, and look I'm, at what I'm, happened in June. Right, and I'm going to tell you only from my point of view, which is discussion with the Pleiadians, okay? Pleiadianship mm -hmm. I'm very in tune with. It's not that, and I'm sure it's the same way. If you want to go talk to another ship, you just go introduce yourself, and you can go talk to any anything around here. Just mm -hmm. because I, I say Pleiadian doesn't mean that I'm limited. It's the same ability. If you get these abilities... You can talk with anybody you want to, assuming mm -hmm. they open the hatch and let you in. Yes. Otherwise, what they'll do is they'll like screech at you and make it really, really difficult to see anything and look at anything. I've tried. I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come um, on, come on, come on, come on. Like, uh, Okay, I'm not going to see what's all going on in that ship. <laughs> <laughs> like, forget that. <laughs> You know? Well, I have carte blanche. I can go on any ship I want and get oh, any info I want. You, you've got, I'm supposed you've to got disclose. Much, much more mature on the subject than I yes. am, then, perhaps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I probably trust you a whole lot better than me. <laughs> well, I, I think it's the Star ET connections, because yeah. I was always the star traveler, billions of races. Every day is a different something you meet for mm -hmm. me. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's coming full cycle back to that again, re-meeting old friends, ETs. Yeah. Getting mm. a perspective of what's going on on the planet, measuring timelines. Mm -hmm. What are we heading into here? What are we experiencing? Give me a hint here so I could tell others about it. Mm, it's basically yeah. what I do. That's it's like 
get, let's get this started. Let's get the party yeah. started. There's a yeah. boom, boom, boom party in my room. Yeah. Let's keep that momentum going. Let's yeah. have the discussions. Oh, Basically yeah. what the and, UTs are um, doing. Right. And I don't know if you're familiar. I declared this two of my shows ago that... Uh, that this month I basically have a resolution from New Year uh, to New Moon to New Moon, and that was to I'm going to see disclosure happen at least a little bit every single day of this month, climaxing more and more towards the full moon. Great, amazing, progressive, big public news, um, and then basically simmering down. So we aren't even at the full moon yet. So this information no. right here. You know, shared on you know as close to today as, as the recording has taken place. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not even the new moon, uh, the, the full moon yet, guys. So we're we're still opening up the channels here of the possibilities, and mm -hmm. and just exactly what we have to be excited about. Um, and I pointed out this this month we many of us who are into disclosure, uh, you know, people like me and Aline are going to be on top of it for you. So. Yeah. Awesome. My resolution: full data dump, full disclosure on the public by September. Bam! Hit. Let's do it all at once. Let's get the people talking. Let's get a reaction. That's mm -hmm. that's the energy I've been putting out. Like full disclosure, yeah. not drip drip. Like bam! Just hit us with it. Yeah, we'll be a little bit shocked, but yeah. most people already like a, know the no, truth. No more than a game of paintball. No more than that. No, no. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, it hurts. Yes, I got a bruise. Yes, I'm covered in blue ink or whatever, you know, and that sucks for a bit. But you come out a little bit tougher and say, okay, I can I can take a couple strong truths, you know, at a time now, you know? But every, everybody woke up this morning and heard about Orlando. Yeah. And they were shocked. Mm -hmm. And you see, and then you, know, you start seeing how people react. It's people standing in line to, to donate blood. That's how they're mm -hmm. dealing with, with that shock. So everybody's mm -hmm. going to have a different reaction to it. It doesn't mean that just because this data is all dumped or these these disclosures are made mm -hmm. that people are going to panic. They're, they're, it's, they're, you know, there's there's, there's going to be a relief, too, and, mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and with uh, so many aspects of what can be disclosed and what will be disclosed. Right. Not just the, the ET stuff. I mean, just well, just no, no, it's it's it's, it's, our... it's tangentially related. Yes. It, yeah, it is. It is related, and energetically wise, in terms of preparation, this idea of like lesbian, gay, bi thing, let's just flush that down the toilet. We just call people people. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. We, there's no straight. We don't even use the terminology. What are you talking about? Straight? You mean like is my right. nose you know narrow? No, I don't. What do you mean? It, it, it's a non-issue. Put that to bed. Right. right. People are like omnivores. That that'll happen too. Put that to bed, okay? Mm -hmm. You're omnivore that doesn't eat meat. You're still called an omnivore. It's all people. Just you eat. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to label that you're separate. You just pick up off the plate what you're gonna eat and what you don't. It's the end of it. Mm -hmm. Right? And not be judged for what you And pick not. To eat it's just like place. saying, Hey, you know, I'm gonna eat meat only once a month. Great. Perfect. Only when they serve lamb. That's the only kind you'll eat. I don't, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But there's no subjugation. There's no divisions. These major right. divisions are happening now. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're happening now because we can't survive with those, a bit, with those nuances in a higher society. Because, right. oh my God, the, the range of prejudices, prejudices that you will find is off the charts. It's off Granted, the charts. Well, and it, but it's also a big part of it is is in order to claim your sovereignty, you've got to know that you're different from everybody else. And that's a good thing. And, that, and, and, and also that you good, think yeah. it's a good thing. So, if so you think it's a good I'll, thing, then you benefit and you will keep it. Right. So all these ways we can group ourselves or define ourselves in different ways, you've, you've got to move around in order to find out who you actually really are and, and yeah. claim that sovereignty. You got to you got to yeah. explore things. It's almost like sometimes we've been afraid to try things because that's just how society would treat us. Sometimes we got to try something. That way. Yeah. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a girl go kiss the next girl, not like tomorrow, but I, you know, I mean like try things or or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, try things and, and and see if it stirs up great, you know, depths within you. Like this, oh my God, how did I never try this? I was afraid of it, and finding out I am absolutely more open in this way. Okay, like, right. 
like that's kind of what this morning this thing did is it blew open this thing that people there may be a much much higher percentage of people not straight you know or even just straight gay mm -hmm. like so, like lots of in-betweens and it's just going to sort of like percolate the world with with basically if everybody's exploring the idea it's not a taboo anymore right right and people uh, open yeah. up all sorts of chakras just being able to express at higher levels of of connection with people you know mm -hmm. and yeah, i can easily I mean, say and com comfortably on air i'm not straight i'm bi right mm -hmm. there you go that's my truth i'm not hiding who i am never will you can Everybody meet, you can meet the you largest go. number of people and make no dissociation with them all all equal yeah. because you've seen both ends of the spectrum right yeah. I, I don't care to me each person is a person i don't care if you're straight bi gay or something else completely out of this world i respect you for the person you are and for what decisions you make in your life that's basically it don't matter the skin color the race whatever your people so yeah. let's let's move into that galactic society where we are accepting of each other and not judging not fighting oh my god i'm jealous of you for mm -hmm. this for that but hey we're all equal in what we can accomplish so let's put aside those differences and work together for the greater right. good of what we're working to or towards mm -hmm. in reality which is the truth justice peace happiness love and following but, your passion our greatest enjoy enjoyment and passion in life and, be, and when you add all those up together the terms of all of that it's basically what I call the word balance. Like this balance of everything I like, basically. <laughs> and I have just enough what I don't like in order to sort of feel like I deserve everything that I like. And then you get over where you realize you just create it all and then your deserve personal value sense of self goes through the roof and you're like a god that can manifest out of thin air. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? But going back to your Palladian stuff, mm -hmm. let's talk about your Palladian what right. you do on the ship and the Palladian <laughs> stuff that you're experiencing. So, um, the, this conversation was incoming. And so they've kept back the excitement. They've, they've, what they call held back the, uh, you know, the closet full of puppies that are going to come out and, you know, lick you to death. Um, <sighs> there's this thing that happens where they say, okay, we're, we know you've got a good time to talk about something. So we're going to wait. And, and before they're going to say anything. So I don't even know entirely what they're going to say. But I'll listen to them now and see what they do have to say. So the first thing is, uh, they like my reference to the puppies. But they got uh, something that's a bit more like Tribbles. They figured uh, the, the human population would like Tribbles more than puppies. Right? So, Super. <laughs> so as it turns out, they have a large colony of Tribbles that are growing. Some genetic funny toy thing that's like a Furby anyways they're saying yeah you know um, Elena basically called their bluff here on on this idea that there is a, a great deal of movement and that there is a great deal of yeah you know we're kind of we're kind of making September October November December uh, a, a big celebration of of hand-to-hand -hand, you know handshake level experiences um and they have a really good idea of, of what they want to do going forward with that um part of the reason why they don't really come to me and just tell me this stuff all right off the bat is because i'm not excited to be an ambassador of sharing the information and and simply by me knowing that it's occurring i could just say that's that's just it's just occurring guys mm -hmm. just you know, just go with it. You'll like it. Like, don't worry what happens. Just, you'll like it. I promise you. I've seen it. I just don't care to tell everybody that I've seen it and what it's going to be like. You know? So, right. it's like... So, what I'm seeing, <laughs> for, the sake, for the sake of what it looks like, um, is an experience where uh, there are uh, some star seeds or... Um, or half Pleiadian breed type people that are automatically basically right on the right on the Pleiadian wavelength of like they already live like them right they already are just like Pleiadian in, in all shapes and form or the closest or closest to Pleiadian culture right they're gonna go to these people that are the real Pleiadians uh, amongst the humans here and they will say 
you know, here we are. Here's your family. We're just like you. You know, we have everything in common. And you would love us because we can talk the same talk. We can, we can speak the same thoughts, right? And they would meet them, the people who are basically pleading if you ran into them today, okay? Right. And then it goes out from there. The people who are slightly less like that, slightly less like that, slightly less like that. Planes only want like the best possible friends they could meet always. They got a, they got a, a schoolyard of 100 kids. They go straight to their favorites every single time. You run, you take those. Okay, let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of him. No, they'll still keep. They know exactly what their next best favorite is. Mm. They are excitement bunnies on a cosmic highway to groovy experiences. I, I don't know how else to explain it. They're space hippies, but there's a lot of really high dimensional Pleiadians as well. Those are like the more 3D Pleiadians. They're the ones that get around. They, you know, they bunny hop different planets and stuff but they're the most chillax and they're most hippie of Pleiadians because they don't even care that they're Pleiadians at all almost at all they don't care to you know not eat meat they're like yeah we'll eat meat <laughs> hallelujah you know and those are the ones that show up early and it's ironic when I say that <clears throat> because the peoples that are like Pleiadians are like the hippies that are still alive from the 60s and 70s. So when I say, oh, 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 but I'm not a hippie like that, I'm probably not on the very first list of people to meet. So <laughs> they are. <laughs> the the older, you know, my older, my parents' generation, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get to see the Pleiadians first. So now I'm like, how do I figure that out? Now i got to get myself into that kind of community. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like you're not a real hippie. If you haven't been wearing tie dye for three years straight, you're not hippie enough, you know, or something. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's it starts there, ironically, with the Pleiadians, but it's not just the Pleiadians being told. Andromedans are gonna do this, Arcturians, even Orions. You think Orions are all bad, they're not all bad. Uh, there's even some reptilian. <laughs> for those who are ready for the actual look of a real reptilian and not faint from it. They probably got the reptilian boldness in them, you know, to stand up to that. Yeah. So it's okay. And they're they're only gonna be the good ones. Only the best of the best are are basically here for this time. Because if they're not here as the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest, then they're not much of a cheerleader for us. You know? We're not getting the gym teacher that right. boots you up the ass to come get us into into gear. We're not. Mm -hmm. We're getting the the really nice ones, okay? <laughs> no and one's gonna like you know challenge you to a, a battle of Bethleth or something, you know, in your spare time in the afternoon. It's it's you got it, it's it's all it's all supportive of our transition. And, yes. And they're not here to save us. They're just here no. to guide us and teach yeah. us. We're gonna we have to make this transition ourselves yeah. and accept these changes. Yeah, and open up our mind to a new paradigm of shifts. Yeah of reality yeah it's it's more like from what i see it uh from what i'm being seen uh is that the humanity will get holographic projections in the sky above cities and that will be they'll, they'll project like their own like television show that you'll get stuff from right and it'll be like their own little television show and you can look up or you look down they'll they'll clear the the sky or whatever or they'll put it below the the cloud level so that everybody could see it and everybody can hear it in their head, but they could just decide to quiet it out. I think it'll be telepathic. I don't think it'll be audio. I, I think it'll be telepathic. Mm. But anyhow, that will be projected around the world. You know, regular television will project those things as it occurs. And they'll just be telling messages to various communities. You have got to shape up this subject. You guys have got too much garbage. Everybody should just start cleaning up the garbage for Christ's sake. We think, based on all our calculations, this is the best move for you right now. It's gonna, it's gonna make you all healthier real fast. You're gonna be feel the, you know, breathe the air better. You're all gonna really like enjoy each other's company more. That's how you're gonna get ascended. And when we're talking ascended, it means we think you're too unhealthy to basically be on these ships. You're too unhealthy. 
Mm-hmm. You, t- you, you, we don't know. Our, our ships are in danger of some kind of level of chaos that you might bring to it. The equilibrium can be so thrown off that the ship won't even be able to fly, right? So we can't, we can't let on people who sort of like sink our ships. And these are the people with the, with the most sunken, low vibrations that they carry with them. They're anchors. And, and we're meant to float and be free as well. Quite literally, we don't need our 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 troubles really, and we we spend you know we don't know how to remove our troubles. I know that. I'm not saying right. it just happens, but you know, for instance, if you're looking at the government, you're looking at the finance system, and you say, "Man, they really screwed up my life. I screwed up my life." Well, until you start finding some way of why you need why you need to wake up from your life being screwed up by money, like maybe money isn't the answer to everything. That's why you got money screwed up issues. Like that's the point. Until you figure out how to let go of all like these really crummy feelings by sort of like saying, actually, this is this is a good thing. Almost like taking all your greatest pains and saying this is a good thing somehow. And you transmute and you raise your vibration and then you're you're a much more dynamic being. High vibration gives you lots and lots of choices. If you choose to embody a physical body and have a high vibration, that means you're thinking of everything at once. Like everything. So what you do is you slow down time so you can get anything done. So time speed goes a little differently when you're <laughs> Palladian too. But it is just one of them. Some people, they want to join those community of Arcturians that still love shotguns and rifles and stuff. Have you heard about them? The, the, no. the cowboy uh, no. cowboy ones? It's totally crazy. They got like, oh yeah, we're ready for everybody's into guns and stuff. I'm like, whoa crazy people (laughs) super yeah like projectile not lasers and stuff like shrapnel and then they heal you up and it's all like a big big fancy game it's like wild west in like a stadium that like flies through space people come by and watch this wild west sort of show of their reality of life it's really perturbed and weird but it's like totally uh, like a space sci-fi shoot 'em up you know cowboy and indians kind of thing yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then you put put them in the Meditech unit and heals you and you're yeah. all good and can yeah, go yeah, back yeah. to playing. Yep. Or or you could be you could tough it out and just say, I don't care, just put a bandage, no healing, and then just run back out there. Okay. It's like a Feel game of pain. World of Warcraft. It's crazy. It's like it's weird to like go out and battle <laughs> for fun. Like like literally, go go live Conan the Barbarian Age or something. Yeah, the, the Klingons. And it's like, yeah, or it, it's, it's very much like, uh, and it changes. It's like, um, what's that movie there? The Hunger Games, right? It's like an arena. Like, oh, we're all bored with this arena. Let's make a new one. And so they make a new arena. They stop fighting or whatever. They're all, you know, they have love making and all those sorts of things. And they're like, okay, new arena. All everybody jump in when it's time. It's like last one in is like a rotten egg, you know, like jumping in the pool. <laughs> and they all just fast beat each other up so much, you know, like totally hurt each other and like, you know, survival and there's like jungle and stuff like that. Sometimes the arena is like a jungle and there's like crazy insects they make that scare them around. It's just games. Just games. They're like, this is like a video game ship. This is bizarre. But anyone's alignment, uh, they aren't here right now. They're they, they're coming in like a comet. They're gonna show up, and you're like, if you're into that vibration at the time, whoop, you can leave with them. Leave like with the comet. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, you know, anybody. Get the space cowboys. Yeah, because the yeah. people who would still have the vibration by that time that comet around is is so few people that love to hold on to the guns and still love to play World of Warcraft or something. You know, people are still into that on the planet. Be like. You were the guys who held out for us. You you held on to that vibration because you knew it was a great ship to ride. And you're going to get uh-huh. on that world where it's a real thing. <laughs> it's like you live it out as much as you want, safely as much as you want, as much pain as you want. you got to have pain inhibitors. It's like doesn't matter, you know. You take it exactly the level of volume you wish to enjoy it. It's like paintball and you decide how much armor you have, you know. <laughs> so. What it's... about the time corps? What are they doing? Do what you know are they anything? doing? They're yeah. basically... Yeah, the, the, the you don't, was oh, oh, yes. I will tell you what they're doing. Yes, please. Okay. 
The time corpse are writing down all the different tickets you can take. You've got tickets to all sorts of places, different groups of people to meet. The time corpse is arranging like a ticket to different events for people. And vibrationally, they deliver these tickets, etherically, in some way. Basically, you say, oh, you've been dreaming of meeting a Palladium. You've been dreaming of meeting a Grey. You've been dreaming of this. And you want to? All right, we're going to slip this ticket in. You're on your way there. You're going to get there. It's going to happen for you. And so literally, those who are focused in all these special ways of like how they wished it could be, like meeting extraterrestrial races, Star Trek, whatever, that basically signs them all up. They're all, they're all in our solar system. They're not outside the solar system. Most of them are here. The uh -huh. people that want to take you to the side of the galaxy is just like Star Trek are here. The group of people that want to take you to the part of the galaxy looks just... Looks just like Star Wars is here. They're here to take you. You could be a geek. You don't have to be an alien. You could just be a geek. And you go up to <laughs> geek world. <laughs> Crazy. Like the super is... space ninja bunnies, you know, that some people have some sort of fetish over. They show up somehow when it's time. You know, <laughs> it's like, what the heck? There's no schedule. Everybody's you know, feeling like their people are ready. And mm -hmm. when they feel that they're ready, they call that the harvest. They say, you want to come? You want to stay? You want to invite us over for dinner? What do you want to do? You know? And maybe we hang out. Let's do it. We'll say, tell you what, we'll come live with you for a month. And then after a month, we all go to our house off the planet. It could be anything like this. Doesn't mean like, hey, oh, shoot, I don't have, you know, you know, I don't have my chapstick or something. Can I, you know, can I actually go right now? Yeah, we could take our time as, as it feels good for you. We could take our time with this. But it's, it's the ultimate harvesting because people are quite alien here. If you haven't figured out ever since the hippies, you've got a very large range of personalities. Right. Very, very large and which is excellent and non-exclusive mm -hmm. either, you know? Yeah. And what's the time corps made of? Who are they? What uh, are they? Okay, so the time corps are ascended humans. They're just like Buddha-like people, who basically mm -hmm. said, "That's it. I'm leaving. The, I'm leaving my body, but I have to have a human body. So, my, so have somebody taking care of my body. That's it. They have a human body being taken care of by like their wife or something like that. But they're they like to, to do, they get to do all the work out of body because they can connect and talk with people and say micromanage the exchange of people leaving the planet who are ready to leave the planet pretty soon. So like the more obvious ones that would want to leave sooner, right? Mm -hmm. The one that have a greater demand for that or, mm -hmm. or, and it's not like they have to be taken, mind you. The other thing is that some, some of those people from up there, like Pleiadians, for instance, they want to meet and hang out with some of some humans and be around them. Right. It's almost like they would like to be here. Like, you guys are cool. I like what being with you. You know, if you're not leaving the planet, we'd like to hang out with you. It might be the other way around. Like, can we come and stay with you? To almost like, almost equal, almost equal number of people going and coming down. Like, sure. let me cultural exchange. It's basically, yeah, let me take your place. Let mm -hmm. me take your place. Like, literally, like, like, yeah, you go, I stay, boom. You know, uh, you know, my family stays down there and you stay with my family, you know, just, just straightforward, like some sort of television show, you so, know, so just the, move around the actors. The, it's like the, the ultimate Airbnb, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You basically switch places with a Pleiadian and you still get to be you. Of course. Mm -hmm. It's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> no. It's cool. But they're, oh, and... they're, they're, it's, it's really, <clears throat> it starts, <clears throat> it's going to take years, mind you. I right. mean, uh, we, between all of us, all we know, we're, we're, you know, we're not the 60 to 70 year old hippie that's may, way more ready to go than we are, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, to the right, to the people who are showing up first. But uh, I, I pretty much, we're not going to notice the first people gone. I think that happens in September. So when we start noticing people gone or like are completely different personalities, like what they did a 180 or oh, you got replaced you left <laughs> you, you you didn't completely come in totally ready for this assignment you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you were out of place yeah. 
you know. Yeah, so you... fine, you're not you're not my old friend. You're just you know a Pleiadian equivalent of him or something like that. You know, embodying the same shape body. And then when the illusion drops, you're like, yeah, this is what I really look like. Sorry, you know, I, I've been in, I've been uh-huh. an alien Pleiadian for the last five years. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, didn't you notice when I sort of freaked it's, it's, out and I had that cold and I got really sick and I, uh, I couldn't talk with you for like a month, even though we talk every day. You know, remember that? Yeah, that was that was me readjusting to my new like having well, to be this person. You it's know? funny because because you know how <clears throat> yeah you know, I um, had never seen an X File until uh-huh. this reboot that started. You know, and so so I've been binge watching all the X. Oh yeah, binge watching. Right. Well, well, binge watching, <laughs> but I, I just watched one. Yesterday, or was it yesterday or this morning? But on the X Files, that they did that. There, that's um, Mulder switched bodies with this this guy because of a, 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 a rip in space time. Yeah. Uh, or at Area Fifty One, and and that was happening more and more. So that's kind of what you're talking about. They they just switched. Mm. Yes. Yeah, but it's 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 physical, right? Yeah. There's yeah, like you a, know you go in you go up a, a ramp and they come down a ramp. Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah, and you know, and you get information hu- about whatever you want to know where you're going. Like before you leave, you get the tip off. This is what's coming for you. You know, get it. You know, read it in the mail, read it in the signs, align to it. You'll mm-hmm. know exactly what you're looking for in a family up there, and that family will eventually say, "Well, we psychically read all your answers, whether you wrote us back or not, and uh, we know that we're a pretty good fit for all the criteria you're looking for. We're your perfect date." You know, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. And um, and we have somebody on our end that's the perfect date for your old life. You know? What? And everybody, get, everybody gets the notice. The parents, yeah. Parents, no. Yep, this isn't my kid, but this is a kid trying to be like my kid. Then you say, did she ever tell you that you have to do all the dishes? <laughs> because uh-huh. we are... She has to do all the dishes, even though maybe she didn't before. Like, you have to do all the dishes. You know, like, see if yeah. they can even play the game of, you know, tricking the child or the individual or the adult into, like, wait a second, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if it comes with all it needs is a little bit of extra makeup, you know, so that you can still go to your work office where everyone has already tons of makeup, you can probably play it off. You can probably play it off with how much you study up or whatever. Take exactly the or the person that has to do the dishes well the the replicator you just put the dish in the replicator and <laughs> yeah. it dissolves hey i didn't have to do the dishes up on the ship right Where's yes. my replicator damn it yeah but you know some people they might be like on this assignment i've got six months to be in vibration with a human i'm gonna watch their television i'm gonna watch their video games i'm gonna watch the mm-hmm. entertainment and boy, that's like heavy training, right? Because it's like, oh, there's so much discomfort in that. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's all these painful experiences. It's like, how can that be entertainment for crying out loud? You know, so much pain in those things. Like, oh, you come to respect it. You know, it's kind of like, I've watched enough wrestling. I could get into wrestling. Like, that was the dumbest looking thing I ever saw before. <laughs> but I got into wrestling. And watch enough wrestling, I can respect it. I can empathize. I can be a part of the other. Mm-hmm. Nah, dead. That's their training. They're doing that. They're doing that right now. Right. Mm-hmm. They already have areas, you know, I want to be I want to trade places with a Star Wars geek or a Star Trek geek. I want to trade places with him and let his friends try to figure out if they're having a psychological breakdown or not with him. Trading out. But I'll try to pretend I'm him. It's like the great play. All you need to do is act one way, because when you go back, they know they know you're not the person. OK, right. they know you can't take their place, that you don't look like him at all. Because they could do some surgeries on the people that take your place down here. Like some of them have that technology to do like, mm-hmm. you know, anatomical, uh, you know, shifting, you know, change your voice. You won't even know. It's like it is a fake. Yes, it is something crazy out of like Blade Runner. But it is still the real deal that, you know, things are moving on. You know, your friend was moving on. I'm staying here because... You do want things to be crummy in this environment. And I want to explore those crummy things and maybe make it better or something in my own way. Ways that my predecessor wasn't going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like maybe my predecessor didn't have, you know, the balls to stand up to you guys and say, you know what, you guys got to get over gays and bi's and all that sort of thing. You know, And, and that's what it takes. Funny how it has the synergy of like meshing and switching places. 
Now, some sure. people, that's not going to happen. Some people, they'll just be like, let's just go. Let's just get out of here. You know, you have nobody you care to influence here. You have no ties to society. Nobody knows who you are. It's as good as just, sh you know, replacing a, a tree in your woods. Like, you have no influence on everything. We can't, we, we have nothing to exchange, right? You just, right. then you just leave. You're just like, oh, we got a whole bunch of people who are hippies too. Just drop in the, the hippie Pleiadians. They don't need invitations. You know, they already are freaking hippies. And all the ones that want to leave and want to go to higher experiences, they'll all be contacted. Like, oh, hey, hey, you want to go to the space? Boom. Mm -hmm. How it happened. I want to travel. I want to see space again. And yeah. Some, some, some people on the planet have awakened and they have their ET memories of who yeah. they were as ETs. And, and they just want too. that back. I, I have several of them. And every time I go hang out with the Pleiadians, they know I, I rejuvenate to the Pleiadian nature of myself. Like I turn more Pleiadian. Like they're watching my DNA ticker going. Like the longer I spend there, the more I'm like, ah, ah, Pleiadian is the best possible vibration I could be thinking of, right? They just know I'm transforming. Like, ah, don't, don't have him back for a couple months. Like, don't, don't let him in. You know, he gets too, he gets too excited. He gets too excited. Yeah, drunk, you know, so I'm like, oh, oh, so I take like doses of Pleiadian insulin or something like that, and uh, I hold a place here from time to time, and every once in a while, like today, I get to see what has been behind the scenes, and I knew that uh, Elena had her own information, so I feel like it's kind of like a one-two, you know, sort of like uh, support for for what's coming in September, starting in September. I think it goes. It goes years, really. So, oh yeah. But but we'll see evidence. We'll get confidence. I mean, we'll know. And that. then you know when we have just enough to believe that we know it is occurring, like we see just enough, like which ha which hippies are gone, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. You figure like, oh, it is true. All I gotta do is say, who do I want to be with? Who do I want to be with? Who do I want to be with? Who mm -hmm. are the ETs I want to be with? Do I want to be with Klingons? That's crazy. That might sound. Some people are into it. You know, sure. they cosplay at, at, you know, Star Trek Con every year as a Klingon. They want to be with a Klingon, whatever. Mm -hmm. The Klingon will get the message wherever they are in the universe or multiverse or in, interdimensional, whatever. And the, the real Klingons will show up for crying out loud. Or mm -hmm. something good, good enough. Like, you're not right. Klingons? Yeah, but we do everything Klingons do. Okay, you're good enough. Okay, we'll go with you. The criteria is in the blueprint of your desires, of the, mm -hmm. of the exactly. signals you set out. Exactly, and yeah. there's a lot of human star seeds who are ET inbound. They came here to experience some Earth yeah. experiences, and now their mission is over. They want to go home. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm an evolving ET. My blueprint is coming back. Mm -hmm. Who's my star family? D -d 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 Dial. I want to go back home. Pick me up now. Well, okay, I'm done. Well, the thing is, is this this has actually already occurred. You see, mm -hmm. okay, where the ETs. Are, are planted into the earth here on earth <clears throat> right they basically send all these loving desires towards the hippies pleading wise they get them to believe in peace love and joy not war okay right. and they get them into that and then they get to start making babies that say this is the most beautiful thing that my parents can think of right now and i'm going to grow up knowing that that's my true purpose is to return that that vibration almost like i was like I'm, I'm a growth from that period of time that suggested peace, love, and joy is exactly what you need right now. When you follow exactly what you need right now, you know exactly who you're inviting. You know exactly what you can potentialize because you believe in all your thoughts. You believe in right. your ability to conceive of a thought and it actually may be true at this point. Right? Because you, you go through, you know, you figure out law of attraction, you figure out your, your power of your thoughts and the quantum and all this, and you sort that out for yourself. But it's at that level. And so, and some people, they prefer surprises. So they don't know when it's going to show up. They actually prefer the surprise. Like, hey, guess who's at the door, honey? You know, <laughs> that kind of surprise. But it's, it's like, what? I, with it. With Lucy, the, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> they came to the door. And they didn't know what a doorbell was or what a knocker was. So they just stood there and waited. The neighbors called us and said, there's some creeps in front of your door. I think they want to come in. You know? So <laughs> you go to the door. <laughs> what the? Who are you? Oh, we want to talk to you. We're from outer yeah, space. We have, 
You know, we have slightly different skin color, and the police yeah. haven't picked us up yet because yeah. they come vibrationally, we repel mm -hmm. the police, and they can't pick us up. Yeah, our vibration mm -hmm. is so high yeah. that no projectile, no no weapon can touch us. We just yeah. deflect it, and we still knock at your door. Or and, hey, it'll cause it'll cause their aim to be off, quite literally. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yes. it's amazing. I mean, we're going to see some pretty wild stuff going uh, down the pipeline, literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this year so, for but certain. We're, but we're still going to see a lot this year, though. Uh, if if you want to see an alien, okay, yeah. of any mm -hmm. sort, pick your pick your one that you well, love. I'm already looking, looking at two right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can. And people are basically getting, like, photobombed by Pleiadian Energy which is kind of like their their truer source, like, you know, their higher self through the higher self. They're basically getting, des getting doses of waking up, whether they just get loved by someone who's like a hippie mm -hmm. or they just know that they're gravitating the first time they hear reggae or something. <clears throat> and, um, and they find those alignments and they'll come to you. And this has already happened because people hear the star seeds Again, we did it through our parents. We didn't physically show up here at the age of six, but, right. you know, it didn't need to. Didn't need to. Now they are showing up. Now they are trading places and, you know, showing up where they fit in. It's almost like they don't care that they might screw everything up. They're hoping right. they might do something to change, rea change this place. Uh -huh. Because at first they'll come in, they'll probably pick fairly feeble like a hippie trying to change politics is not going to have a great impact on politics so in the bigger picture politicians don't care you know like so let let the hippie in he, he's never stopped politics before fine we don't care anybody who can change politics you're on a longer waiting list before you can come here that sort of thing right right it's not even necessarily the government's talking about this but the ssp okay and the core, we'll call them, they're all about managing this massive in and off the planet. And it's mm -hmm. like a, there's a giant outer airport communications grid that needs to be set up. People just can't come in. Every, it's like, a, it's like a, a larger version of air traffic control. You can, uh, you can appreciate that's, this, Dom, because he was an air traffic yeah. controller. Uh -huh. It's like an outer yeah. space version of it. Like in the outer orbit of the satellites and whatnot. Like, who's coming in? Who's coming in? You got an appointment? You got three hours. You got to be out of there in three hours. That's your, you know, that's like at the border, right? You go across the border from Canada to America. Mm -hmm. Say, how long are you staying? Okay, we're planning on you staying on that long. So our resources are going to be taxed if you start, you know, asking to stay longer. Right? Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just a giant, a massive airport. And oh. it's a good that the airport is there so those... Um, Drake or reptilians can't come and go as they please. Yeah, they said they couldn't. They couldn't set this up because they would have destroyed this. They mm -hmm. would have just shown up and screwed up the show all over the place. They just, if they if they could have shown up and shot at anything, and shot at anything, the reputation of the entire connection between humans and extraterrestrials would drop like overnight. Right. So there had right. to be absolutely no danger to humans leaving. Or, or vulnerable, of, you know, ships that aren't, like, have weaponry and stuff like that. They're just, like, colony-like ships. They're just, like, giant floating malls, essentially. You know? They don't have any weapons. They're not ready to fight. It's like that movie, uh, uh, Wally. You seen that giant ship in Wally? It's like, yeah. nobody's got any capability to do anything. It's fine. Some of those ships are showing up, and the lazy people can go join them. The lazy <laughs> people want to be on their couch. They, yeah, you could do that. But they, it needs to be safe. They just couldn't be attacked. Right? Mm -hmm. So right. that's why it's basically all weapons are done. And yes, nuclear missiles, you're never going to have a nuclear missile go off again. You're not even going to have another reactor go off again. That is side Fukushima is the last one they let slide by. Mm -hmm. they're, they're causing disclosure to the whole planet if they have to, to fix that, that plant. But you right. know what it is? This, uh, ET connections is a personal thing. It's family to family, basically. Mm -hmm. Not person to person, mm -hmm. but family to family. So yeah. the alignment of your family matters, not just the one kid who believes in E.T. You know, it's your right. whole family. Yeah. It's, it's the balance of your whole family if it's enough. If it's three out of four, then you need evidence. Well, then you'll see evidence. And then the fourth one's 
convinced. Okay. You know? So yeah, there, mm-hmm. there's a lot of ETs out there, billions of them. Yeah. There's, there's so no many. shortage. Not you're not running out of the good ones by not catching the first couple people leaving. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's not like, yeah, exactly. oh, those must be the best ones. They're super hippies. Oh, I love to. Doesn't mean you can't reunite with them. Once you're off right. planet, you can you can shape your career plan, you know, or which or, or not career plan, but your your destiny. You can say, sure. yeah, hey, you know, you guys are great, you know, but I want to go over here. I saw some things over here, and you're like, yeah, you got to do what you got to do, you know. And, you know, it's nice. It's like basically living in families, like hostels, not hostels, but like, but yeah. You know, bed and breakfast is basically uh, of a sort, of a sort, you know, and, uh, and you know, checking out what's out there. So. And you also got your Agartha network within Inner Earth yeah. where you could do cultural exchange. So you don't have mm-hmm. to go off planet to see an advanced civilization. Not you can do right. a cultural exchange. Yeah. And, and there them. is ways to go off planet, mind you also, that doesn't involve getting in a ship. It's just a teleporter type of thing. It's just like a portal, you know, like in the movie, uh, whatever. What's that one? Uh, where they go into a pyramid in the desert. Tomorrowland? No, Stargate. not Tomorrowland. Uh, with Kurt Russell. Stargate. Yeah, just like Stargate. the Stargate. Like the movie Stargate. It's just like a watery, right. reflective surface that you just walk through and then you get to another place. So, um, you know... It basically starts to be a lot easier, and I'm being told the reason why this is happening is because there's a calm down in the political system, mm-hmm. as in the political system has a whole lot less confidence in the people, right? People are really so very mistrust, mistrustful. It's basically they're trying to follow the energy that turns this uh, current election into such an obvious circus that you should be paying admission to see more of the circus for the sake of it just being a circus, just being right. a really big drama for nothing but the idea of drama. If you want to go to the drama circus, you pay for that now. It's not free, you know? It's not even easy to get to. And then everybody's like, man, wow, I really don't care, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they face realities that they're more in tune with. Right? Or There's... the ufologists get stirred up. Oh my God, Hillary Clinton just talked about UFOs on the yeah. news. It made headlines. Yeah. Hillary Clinton is, you know, making this a campaign platform. Mm-hmm. She's going to do it. But Hillary Clinton is just trying to get attention like all the others right. are doing. Well, that, but she, she's also got John Podesta on her team. And John Podesta really wants the disclosure yeah john podesta is actually the one that gave hillary the possibility of having that conversation on the air yes. so john podesta is he's there's a lot of evidence showing and he's the the main campaign and you know manager and he's worked under so many presidents and everything like that is basically you know he's like the number one democrat essentially like if that 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 isn't an officer running for office he's like the right. head of the you know democratic party almost and then um, there's Stephen Bassett, who's mm-hmm. saying Obama is going to disclose quite a bit about extraterrestrials and UFOs. That's, that's Obama's going to do it. Right. That's what we've been told, too. Yeah, we've been told that as well. Uh, the other thing is um, they know that Obama wants to leave really, really quickly after he does his disclosure, like within days. Uh, so basically, he's not he's not pulling the pun. He's not pulling the pin. Until he sees a business plan for what happens, like to all of the United States. Until he sees the business plan of what happens when a president is yanked and there's no more presidents. Mm-hmm. He says he wants to see the whole plan. Otherwise, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it. I'm not I'm not calling disclosure. I'm not laying it all out. I'm going to be out there for 72 hours telling everybody everything that I'm learning. Basically, you're hearing it from the, you know, the, the, you know, the man himself. You're not hearing it from a secondary or from a scientist. You're hearing it from the president himself. He's basically telling you straight up and down all of it. It's not being interrupted. It's going for three days. It goes for like two hours in, uh, over three days. He tells those. That's the most probable reality, as I'm being told mm-hmm. at the moment. It's practically scripted already. Okay. And he just wants to know that the extraterrestrials are not going to screw things up around here. Right. Or, you know, that the planet's going to be in good hands. Okay. 
uh, Putin had to do had to do that. He had to go up there and see if the Pleiadians were or whoever they were. They weren't Pleiadians actually in the case of Putin, but they were another benevolent group. And they said, seriously, what have you got to offer me and my people? Like, what mm -hmm. kind of culture exchange do we have on our hands here amongst the Russian people? What have you got? What kind of Russian like race can we have? A beneficial relationship if this whole thing is happening and everybody's got like you know the scissor cutting in september okay i want to know i want to know that this is going to happen i'm already planning for it you and know? isn't putin a pleiadian agent himself because the real putin was uh, off the board 10 years right. ago no yes taken it's, out? it's not the no it's not the same flesh and blood but he's you know he's got like i don't know what they do what they do dna injections so you eventually become like him almost in every way and have his memories and stuff i don't know what it is it's this thing that gets you to transform to from being one person to another person uh mm -hmm. you should only do it with certain species a lot of species can't do that but yes a pleiadian is probably very likely i don't i don't know that and i'm not getting a confirmation on that but it's very likely from my point of view that he's pleiadian because he's you know pleiadians at the time of around 10 years ago, we still had a lot of aggression. The ones that were coming here, still had a lot of aggression. And so he would have matched one of them, like a, a, a mm -hmm. great level of, uh, you know, certain tenaciousness, you know, not necessarily aggression, but very tenacious, like, rah, 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 rah. I'm going to get right. things done. I'm going to go after, I don't care what people think, I'm going to get out of my way, very bullying their head in. Um, and so there's, uh, you know, the Pleiadians only really showed up here, I think, 12 years ago right in, in large numbers um and so that that i believe that happened around that time something along the uh, along the history book sort of leads towards saying that they're not confirming it because we pulled a fast one they didn't know they're going to ask this question and they <laughs> didn't come up with authority whether to tell us if we could actually confirm it with them <laughs> they didn't ah. know we were say that <laughs> so well, i could okay. talk about it from another point of view <laughs> I always well, pull a fast one. I right? always got an unexpected we, questions. We we've got a show on Tuesday, so uh, <laughs> they've got time. We can come back. <laughs> we can well, we can poke the bear more. <laughs> I noticed that Putin's been kissing puppies, and he has a few dogs of his own, and no. he let his ex-wife out out of the asylum, and he's given her a divorce. Mm -hmm. So it's not the same Putin no. running around town. No, that's for sure. Well, the thing is, um. The way that you see yourself and understand yourself manifests your physical body, right? Like whatever you think of yourself, that's what you got for a body physically. Like that's true, you know, going all the way. Whether you understand what you see of yourself or not, it gets into all sorts of sub, you know, vibrational subconscious things. It doesn't matter, right? It, it just is what it is. You're not about to change what you look like overnight. However, when you do get to go on a ship, you can subatomically change. You can quickly change to what you would like to feel like. So before you leave, they want you to have at least the blueprint of what you want to be. Something you're definitely looking forward to being. And mm -hmm. if you have at least the blueprint in your mind, then like, oh, we can make that happen. We can genetically code that in, in into, the, into the tools that they use when you're now on a ship. And we can make it also so you can breathe our air and all this sort of thing. Instead of having to be in certain air lockers in a ship with different air pressures. It, it sucks, but some people may have to do that. You know, before they acclimate, they change your atmosphere. They introduce nicotine into the atmosphere if that's what their homeworld's like. And you got to, like, get used to it. it, it yeah. So, yes, many different species and, and alien beings. Uh, it's it's really like... You know how we heard, we heard about Palladians and dramas? That's just because they're, like... They're, like, the largest in popularity. All right? There's, like, enough... Andromedans on hand to take a large number of people, right? The ones who are not into Andromedans for another five, ten years, there's still Andromedans trickling in, you know, with slower ships or something. Who knows? Right. But it's as if everybody is standing outside Disneyland waiting to open. Mm hmm And the tapes just got to get cut. Yeah. And, you know? Open that door and let Tomorrowland in. And let's yeah. let's get the show on the road, basically. Awesome. Yeah, it's Tomorrowland awesome. going both ways. It's basically opening up the border between Canada and the U.S. Just, what? There's no border? Okay. That was just a nice little, you know, act of tradition, but we just wave as we go by. Now that's all mm -hmm. we do. You know, things like this. It's like the same thing with regards to the ETs feeling comfortable with us not joining their lives and screwing up their entire culture too quickly 
unless that's exactly what they're needing. They got you show up. You may be like, I'm the first person out. Do 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 do. You show up in a in a, in a world where they're so boring. They brought you in to spice things up because you're like, eh, you're so boring. You're so boring. I can't stand it. We got to spice things up. So you are like the total firecracker nutcase that goes around and changes your society because they're like, that's who we wanted. We need somebody well, like this in our that's society. That's like Trenid, Trenid the, who left his, his people because they're so boring and he, he's, he's now oh, that's working right. with, that's with right. humans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's an extraterrestrial that we know of. Yes, yeah, yes. and like Alina was normal one day, and then she got switched, and now she's channeling her ET personality, and more of the ETs coming in and started saying things all over the place, and people at work go, what the heck are you saying, woman? Yeah. But hey, that's the new me. That's the improved yeah. version of me who wants to disclose, you know, who wants the truth and the honesty. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the more right. the merrier, the energy. Yeah. I'm vibing the energy to do this. Yeah. Wherever I go, the energy just flows to other people to make it happen if it's meant to be. So it is. It's a good flow. <laughs> awesome. It's an awesome. honest flow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do got to wrap this up. I do have other appointments I need to get to. But thank you yes. guys for joining today and having hey, this thanks conversation. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. I'm sure we can keep thank talking you. for a long time. Uh, and maybe sometime in the future we will again soon. So, yeah. Um, Anybody who Lena, was is meeting you. anyone who's catching this video online, um, I'm Julian Wells, and my website is julianwells.com, and uh, I have you know appointments that you can make to speak with me, and I have lots of other thing on my lots of other uh, material on my YouTube channel, including sessions I've done with people and all sorts of interviews I've done. And Elena, would you like to share your information? Yes, I'm Alina Kapunik, and uh, I have a beautiful, interesting website uh, called Messages from a Star Traveler. It's about spirituality, it's about disclosure, UFOs, artwork, you name it, it's there. Um, also, my YouTube channel, Awakening Cosmic Reality Show, where this uh, beautiful interview will be posted. Uh, it'll go up because my viewers love this kind of information, and um, I'm glad... Julian, that we reconnected in the, yeah. the show, and Dawn, that I got to meet you. That I've was always great, Elena. Wanted to see all three of us together for this, and it just magically happened. It's awesome. Thank you, guys. Super. Yeah. Well, Thank you're you. very welcome. It's been till the next time. Uh, cheers, everyone.